Russia's invading army is racing against the weathercock, trying to seize yet more towns in Ukraine's eastern Donbas region before the ground gets muddy this autumn and temperatures later plunge. The coal mining town of Toretsk is on the verge of falling to Moscow's forces, an outcome which would make it the latest in a handful of towns and villages falling in recent months to Russia's grinding Donbas offensive launched a year ago. Ukrainian military expert Vladislav Zeleznev says that Russian occupiers may advance in the Toretsk direction if they continue to turn a blind eye to their massive losses in the battles for the city of Toretsk. According to him, the attempt to flank Toretsk was useless for the enemy. Zeleznev noted that the invaders tried to encircle the Ukrainian armed forces garrison in Toretsk but lost a lot of resources. Therefore, the occupiers have returned to the old tactics that were developed during the First and Second Chechen Wars. In particular, first, the active use of cabs and artillery in order to guarantee the destruction of any building in the city. So our troops are again facing challenges, the military expert emphasized. Zeleznev added that the Russian army can continue to send the maximum amount of equipment and manpower to the Toretsk direction. On the one hand, I understand that modern military science says that conducting combat operations in urban areas is one of the most difficult. In these realities, an army that is advancing suffers losses. However, now we can say that the enemy is still making progress in Tourette's. Under such conditions, the enemy is ready to take big losses and in return have progress on this section of the front, the expert emphasized. He noted that the resource factor will play perhaps the main role in the battles for Tourette's. If the Russian occupiers continue to not count their losses and throw all their forces and resources into this direction, then they will continue to advance. Zeleznev said on Espresso TV. Fierce house-to-house -house fighting rages in Toretsk, a Ukrainian stronghold since Russia's first invasion of Donbass in 2014 following the occupation of Crimea. For most of the first two years of Russia's full-scale invasion launched in early 2022, it was tucked away in a calmer part of the front line until Russian forces started storming it this June. In response to the successes of the Russian military industrial complex, the Ukrainian military has upgraded its drones, equipping them with thermite charges. These weapons are capable of releasing molten metal that burns at a temperature of 2,427 degrees Celsius, which is why the Ukrainian armed forces soldiers have dubbed them Dragon Drones. This was reported by the commander of the Ukrainian armed forces strike drone company, Vyacheslav. They have moved to a more official level, and their supplies seem to have improved a lot. Vyacheslav said, as quoted by the New York Times, the new Ukrainian drones use thermite cartridges. Thermite, originally developed for welding railway tracks a century ago, is a mixture of aluminium and iron oxide. The mixture causes a self-sustaining reaction when ignited, making it virtually impossible to extinguish. The first use of these weapons became public back in early September. That's when video emerged showing one dispersing the molten mixture into trellises that concealed Russian troops and equipment. Additional videos soon popped up on social media showing more Ukrainian units using the weapon that way. Russia is also trying to use similar systems, but to what extent remains unclear. 
The combination of the searing heat of the thermite and the maneuverability and speed of a drone makes this a very lethal and versatile weapon. We are now seeing it applied elsewhere on the battlefield. At first, the drones were being deployed to burn away the areas where Russians sought cover and under the dense growth. Ukraine is also using these drones to attack armor. Using these fire-breathing drones on other target types does make sense as thermite may not be able to destroy some targets but can certainly damage them and take them out of the fight. Burning alive in a bunker filled with the horrific compound is also one heck of a psychological deterrent as well as being brutally effective.